everyone. My name is Jonathan, a student reporter with Invention Convention Worldwide. I'm super excited to introduce my guest, Anna Lois, an 11th grader from Connecticut. Anna Lois's most recent invention, Blood Donation Buddy, won not only second place in her grade, but also best prototype award at the Invention Convention US Nationals 2022 competition. Anna Lois is a recurring inventor and she continues to work on new inventions to this day. Welcome, Anna Lois. Hi, awesome. Thank you for having me. To start, could you tell me a bit about what makes you so passionate about blood donation and if there was anything specific that pushed you to pursue creating your invention? Absolutely. So I was really passionate to do my invention because I had, I think my freshman year, I started out with trying to donate blood for the first time. And I was really excited, but I was also very nervous. And what ended up happening was I got in there, I was really I was sweaty palms and my heart rate was really high. And I remember the nurses would tell me they come over and be like, hey, your blood pressure is really high. Are you sure you're okay to donate? And I really did want to. And they sat me down. And after I kind of cooled off, I finally ended up, was able to donate. And uh, once the process started, the nurse would come over and then she would say, hey, we're having an issue with getting the blood out from your arm. Um, and what ended up happening was she ended up giving me a sock to squeeze. And that helped to increase the blood flow out from my arm and into the bag. And I had wondered, well, could this be made into a device that more people that are apprehensive to donating blood also utilize so that it encourages more people to donate? Uh, and then I was also inspired to do it because donating, donating blood has also been a really important process in my own family because my aunt, she had recovered from lymphoma. And because of that, in her childhood, she had needed to get blood transfusions quite often. And this has kind of started a legacy for my dad to donate blood and then to also my grandma. And now it's kind of passed on to me and I try to donate any chance that I can. So that's my inspiration. Hearing about your experience and then you not just walking away from it, but because of you being an inventor, you decided I've noticed this problem and I'm not going to walk away from it. I'm going to use my skills to try and address it for not only myself, but other people. That's incredible. Thanks. <laughs> and so like with each iteration, like having a higher and higher fidelity prototype, were there things that you were learning from the previous one that you were able to apply to the next one? I would say that my years of being an inventor has really helped me to get to this point where I'm able to identify the different factors in my inventions that I can take to the next level because I'd always have my STEM middle school teacher, Mr. Bidwell, he'd come to me and be like, okay, it's great that you have this one prototype, but always keep in mind that you can always improve something. So he always gave the example of the Dyson vacuum. There was always like hundreds of iterations that came with that prototype. And he didn't even stop once he got it working. He just kept going with it. And I always think applying that mentality when you're inventing is important because you don't want something that just works. You want something that, you know, is so successful that it can be, you know, almost take away any flaws within it, you know? So always keep the wheels turning in your head, I say. No, I love that. Just always striving to improve it, improve it, improve it, never settling. That's incredible. One thing that I noticed and I love about your invention is like it performs two distinct functions, like one relieving stress, but then like you mentioned, making sure that the blood doesn't coagulate. And so with like the blood not coagulating, how did you find out about that problem? Is that something that commonly happens today? I noticed that when I was looking down at my blood, um, it would just kind of collect in a bag. And then I did more research and I was like, well, what really happens to the blood afterwards? Where does it go? How is it, you know, given out to the patients eventually? What's that process behind the blood transfusions? And I had noticed that some devices out there do incorporate some sort of a shaking machine that also helps to uh, prevent the blood from settling. And then with the settling um, comes the coagulation, especially if it's exposed to oxygen. And I thought, what if I somehow came up with a device that could help aid that process um, that not only helps with your attention, but also make sure that you have a perfect packaged pint of blood that you can then give to someone that's really in need. No, definitely. And I can tell that, yeah, you're very knowledgeable about the, like the subject and you've done your research. You take a lot from the observations that you've made, not only like your own experience, but other people's experiences as well. And so during developing the prototypes and even today, 
Did you find that it was important to hear about the experiences of others and get their feedback on the device and not just yourself? Yes. Um, when I was doing my testing, I would have different people tell me, well, did you use specific pressure because other people squeeze harder than like a full grown man than maybe someone like me um, who might have a weaker grip when it comes to the blood flow. So that's something I'm trying to regulate um, and then integrate into a new prototype in the future. And then I, I've been trying to get my invention into an actual blood drive. Uh, unfortunately, there have been some issues with me just you know, bringing in my invention in a person be like, hey, can I use this while I donate? Um, some questions might raise up. But other than that, I'm I'm still trying to get it into that setting because I know that's where I will get my raw data from instead of me just, you know, bringing it up to someone and then having the phlebotomy arm right next to the person and then sticking a needle in the phlebotomy arm um, and then being like, okay, now that you've seen that we have put this needle into this plastic arm, are you stressed at all? If you are stressed, can you focus your attention on this device? Can you tell me a little bit what that experience is like? From being just a serial inventor, are there any skills that you've learned from inventing that you apply to life in general? Uh, before I was doing inventing, uh, I might not have been motivated or thought that I had the right skills or even the capacity to learn certain skills to solve a problem that's close to me. And I think from inventing, I've developed a self-confidence to be able to take something I'm passionate about and then figure out how to make it into its own creative solution for more people to benefit from. Because really what inventing has helped me to do is be able to pinpoint how I can make the world a better place and how I can make the lives of people around me easier. Because really, my I feel like my mission in life is to save lives and to make life more bearable and um, more equal for people around the world. So that is my mission. Yes, no, absolutely. And I, I love that. And we need so much more of that in this world. And that's why it's so great to see what inventors like you were doing. And so like, yeah, with that, do you have any more inventions on the way? Or are you working on developing any more ideas that you can give us a sneak peek on? So I'm currently doing a study on cervical cancer impacting minority demographics and specifically uh, Black and Latina women. And it tends to be that HPV is causing cervical cancer in these minority demographics and then leading to an increase in mortality rates. And this is something that I've seen in my own community and is a problem that I am trying to solve with my own research that I'm currently looking into for a non-invasive process for HPV pre-screening so that women can have the comfort of testing and cervical cancer awareness in their own home. Wow, no, that is incredible. That is incredible. And yeah, just seeing the potential impact, I'm excited to see how that continues to develop. So yes, keep working on that. And like you said earlier, you feel like it's your calling to save lives and help people. What what drives that motivation in you? Um, I would say definitely my fascination for the medical field and biomedical engineering. And then uh, honestly, in my family, I have seen how different diseases and medical phenomenon have impacted people in my life, uh, whether that be, you know, the people I live with right now or, you know, other relatives that I have. Um, I've seen how certain procedures can impact lives so much that I feel should be either improved or could be aided and hopefully allow for a more futuristic way of uh, performing certain procedures in the future is what I'm looking to do. And I really do want to apply my love for engineering, robotics, and mechanical engineering to biomedical engineering um, to where I can help with that aided process. Wow. No, this is, wow. You inspire me. So thank you and oh, keep doing the work you're doing. Absolutely. And I mean, I'm learning from you right now, but for everyone young or old who wants to be as incredible of an inventor as you are, and they just want to start, what advice would you give them? Um, I would tell them that they should uh, look to find any problems that are facing them or their community or their family, and don't be afraid to expand on it and ask questions. Always try to network with as many people as you can, and there's always someone out there in your line of interest that is willing to help mentor you or at least give you basic uh, skills or background into what you want to achieve, because 
I know growing up, I was very shy and timid and I would have no courage to even go up to maybe a teacher I never met and be like, hey, I don't know how to use electronics. Can you show me? Uh, it really just took me coming out of my comfort zone and then being able to tell myself that, yes, I can learn these things. And yes, I can come up with an invention, whether or not it works the best or not. That is part of the learning process. So never discourage yourself also if you find out that your invention might not work as properly as you expected. You're always going to face challenges and that's just you know, part of the learning process. And that is what makes you a better inventor, finding out how to take those problems that you now have and then solving those small solutions. They're like the mini wins that you'll find in life. Um, and I think that's what's so rewarding about inventing is that, you know, you're able to self-develop and see yourself grow. So it is definitely an amazing process that I feel that everyone should have exposure to. Absolutely. So would you say that inventing has gotten easier for you or you've become quicker at creating prototypes as you've gone on? I think that it has, uh, the inventing process has definitely helped to shape my mind in the engineering process um, when it comes to inventing. So today I find it easier to draft out kind of what I want to look for in an invention, kind of things I want to incorporate and things I need to keep in mind, whether it be access to materials, um, how I'm going to end up testing the invention, but it all comes with experience. I know that my few years with inventing my different projects has gained me a lot of skills that I will use for the rest of my life, but there's still so much out there that I have yet to discover. And my hope is that with more years of inventing that I will be able to develop my skills as an inventor. And it all just comes from different experiences. So cherish any moment that you can to learn something. Wow, that you're incredible. So thank you, you so much. On behalf of all of us at Invention Convention Worldwide, thank you so much, Ana Lois, for joining me. Be sure to check out our other student inventor interviews on our YouTube channel. Until next time, bye. <laughs>